Dino 2.6 just dropped and this release is full of quality of life and performance improvements. First of all, we are introducing a new subcommand called dx, which is equivalent to the npx command and is a convenient way to run binaries from npm and JSR packages. For those unfamiliar with it, npx lets you run a package without installing it globally, which is great for quick scripts or tooling. With DinoDX, you get the same convenience plus improved security and performance optimizations. This release also brings more granular control over permissions. We've introduced the ignore read and ignore env flags, which allow you to selectively ignore certain file reads or environment variable access. So instead of Dino throwing a not capable error when trying to perform an operation while the relevant permission had not been granted, you can instead direct Dino to return not found error and undefined respectively. These new flags allow more flexibility when running untrusted code. Oftentimes, you might not want to grant full permissions, but a certain dependency requires reading 20 environment variables or config files from your home directory. These dependencies handle missing environment variables or files gracefully, but they were not able to handle Dino's not capable errors. With these new flags, you can now run such code without granting full permissions. Another big improvement is that Dino 2.6 integrates a new experimental and significantly faster type checker for TypeScript written in Go. We've seen speed improvements of around 2x with our internal projects over the previous implementation written in TypeScript. On the type checking side, several long-standing pain points have been fixed. Dino is now more tolerant of non-standard import schemes and bare ambient module declarations, which means fewer false positive errors when working with framework tooling or custom module loaders. All of this adds up to a more predictable check experience, especially in multi-package workspaces. Dino 2.6 also ships with a new JavaScript feature called Source Phase Imports. Source Phase Imports are a new kind of import which gives you the raw source representation of a module. In the case of WebAssembly, that means you can import a compiled WebAssembly module directly as part of your build step without having to fetch the file at runtime. One of the most important additions in this release is the new audit subcommand, which helps you identify security vulnerabilities in your dependencies by checking the GitHub CVE database. This command scans and generates a report for both JSR and NPM packages. And for another layer of security, we've also added the experimental audit socket flag that integrates with socket dev. Both of these are particularly valuable in CI-CD pipelines where you want to fail builds if vulnerabilities are found. In light of recent NPM supply chain attacks, these measures help mitigate security vulnerabilities. We also improved the bundler, making it more reliable and compatible with more use cases. The bundler now works seamlessly within web workers, allowing you to dynamically bundle code even in multi-threaded contexts. We've also enhanced handling of different target platforms. For instance, when bundling for the browser, the bundler now correctly avoids using Create Require and other Node.js specific APIs to ensure your bundles run cleanly in browser environments. And finally, Dino's Node.js compatibility layer continues to mature in Dino 2.6 with dozens of improvements across file operations, cryptography, process management, and database APIs. This release is a testament to our commitment to making Node.js code just work in Dino. You can read more details about the 2.6 release in the blog article link below. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and until next time, thank you for watching.